Hello, I'm Helen Patel and this is the entrance to Tim Bath House Kitchen Garden. We're going to have a look round today. We've been here seven years, we started from scratch and using organic and permaculture principles we made a kitchen garden here. So let's have a look. Everything here is a no dig system. We are in the Cotswolds where the soil is only a few centimetres and then we hit rock. So digging wouldn't work here anyway for gardening. Um, so these are my newest beds. I've made them really deep and we fill them with a mixture of homemade compost, soil we can find. Sometimes we go to a community composting scheme and get their compost, which is really good, it's free. Um, and then we build up the soil with mulches. So on these parsnips, for example, we've got grass pippings. Um, so they keep the moisture in and they feed the worms. So that's making soil and doing several useful things at once, keeps the weeds down as well. And so I mix things up, we've got courgettes, we've got flowers, we've got beans using vertical spaces, which I really like. This is my little bean bower with a seat for resting in. Um, and then there's a compost bin here, right in the middle of the bed. You might wonder why it's there, but it's what well, I call it in situ composting fill it during the season with weeds and we also put in urine which is a really good source of nitrogen collect that separately um, and so during the season it's making compost and when the end of the when the courgettes are finished I'll take the bin away and so you've got lovely compost ready to spread and make a new layer on the bed so that's another method one permaculture idea that I really like is using um, all the dimensions in the garden so using the flat space but then making vertical um, structures so these are just old fence posts with some um, netting, metal netting that came off a skip and it makes a great place to grow beans. It's on the north side of the bed so that all this is still in sun so this isn't casting shade onto the other crops and I could you know ring the changes it could be sweet peas one year or you could grow squash up it um, but these if the beans do really well um, yeah it's a sunny spot. We don't have much soil here and these are the first beds I built, building up just about 10 centimetres. Um, so in time we'll make them higher. Um, but you can see that even though there isn't much soil, we've got enormous crops here. This chard is huge and this celeriac is doing really well. And again, you'll see it's all mulch. This is mulch with grass, which comes from our hay meadow. Um, and so that keeps the moisture in and it's also a, it's building soil so in time this soil is going to rise and you know eventually I'm hoping they will be up here we're going to add boards and that's the thing about permaculture it's, a, it's an amazing realization that we can make soils we're not stuck with damaged soils or agricultural soils that have got no life left in them we can renew and reinvigorate and make soils so these are all really useful um, techniques and you can use them in your own garden um, but you know, the proof is in the chard I would say. I do have a rotation going on here it's very simple the brassicas move one step that's the cabbage family each year and the onions follow them and then other than that I'm fairly easy and free going about how it works out just grow things where, where I fancy. So this is um, a bed of onions here got three different things. We've got spring onions that I sowed in um, June. Those are ready for eating in salad now. And I grow a lot of red vegetables. That's a red spring onion because the pigments in red food are really good for you. Um, then I've got some other spring onions, baby ones that are coming on here, which I sowed in um, July. So those will be ready later in the year in September. And then these are onions that I grew from seed in spring and they will mature to make full size onions. So you can see there's mulching, mulching with grass clippings to keep the moisture in around the onions. Once they're of a size, set the size, that's okay. Um, and so you can see that these beds are quite shallow. So I'm, I'm about to add some more boards here so that we can continue to build up the soil. Um, because the thing about permaculture is we realise we can make soil, which is like almost a revelation because where soils are damaged or eroded or lost or they've been intensively farmed, we now know that we can re recreate and regenerate and reinvigorate soils. And in fact, regenerative agriculture, as we know it, has very much sprung from permaculture thinking about soils. So this is a 
it on a very small scale. We harvest a lot of nutrients from the site, so we have comfrey, we also harvest nettles and we use those to make liquid feeds which are really helpful. Um, but this is another example of something that we use which is a green manure. This is alfalfa which is a nitrogen fixing crop. It's used agriculturally but when I have a spare space in the garden I don't know what to put in or I have a gap I just put a row of alfalfa in and I simply crop, chop, crop the top so that will be chopped off and that will go in the compost and so all the nitrogen that it's been fixing will be collected and composted and so green manures are lots of different kinds are a really good way of stabilising the soil, fixing nitrogen if they're leguminous and adding to the compost and so eventually when I, when I move on and start something else I'll just cut the tops off or just pull them out gently and most of the nitrogen fixing nodules and the nitrogen that they've worked on will be left in the soil so that's a really good um, thing to leave behind for the next crop. So that's just an example of how we're thinking all the time about how we feed the plants in an organic system.